guys, welcome back. We are on part three of Why We're Catholic by Trent Horn. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Laura, and this is what Laura likes. We are doing a book club where we are working through the entire book in five weeks. If you are making a video, please let me know in the comments down below so I can add you to the playlist. If you are reading along, make sure that you add your thoughts on this chapter or this section because wow, wow, this, this is it. This part three is like where it all stems. This part three is where my passion lies in letting the my Protestant brothers and sisters know the fullness of truth. Because as Blessed John Newman said, to be deep in history is to cease to be Protestant. So we are gonna talk history today. We are gonna talk early church fathers. I'm going to try my best to synthesize as much as I can from this part, but it is heavy. It is heavy with you know, why we're Catholic, why we have a Pope, why we have priests, why we celebrate Mass, and why we baptize infants, which I already have an infant baptism video, so I'm gonna link that um, up above, somewhere up here, and I never can figure out which way to point, and just, I'll learn at some okay, point. So but before I get started, in my last video, I linked Lee Strobel's The Case for Christ, right? Because we were talking about like, why Christ is divine and all that kind of stuff in the last video. And I was really impressed, and I always am impressed, when Protestants put out videos that talk about, you know, why the Bible is something that we can rely on, and why Jesus Christ um, rose from the dead and is our Savior, and all that kind of stuff, and that's awesome. But I always wonder how people stop there. Like, how you stop there and don't get into the sacraments. Because, to me, the sacraments are what makes all this reality, right? The sacraments are our way of concretely practicing God's graces that he gives us. It's not just a mental thing, it's a physical thing. And actually in this book, Trent Horn talks about how as physical beings, you know, the sacraments are gifts to us. It's like receiving a gift in the mail versus an email or receiving a I love you with a hug versus just an I love you. And so the sacraments, you know, of the Eucharist and of the confession and all the you know, mar marriage and all these blessings they have both form and matter, and they do that in a way as a blessing to us. I think what I want to do is start with the idea that we have a lot of early church fathers. We have a lot of we have a lot of writings from you know decades after Jesus died, of which obviously a lot of it's holy scripture, but but into you know the first few centuries after Jesus' death and resurrection. And in these early writings, we have evidence of the practice of confession to a priest. We have evidence of celebrating mass with the Holy Eucharist and the, the you know the sacrifice of the mass, and we have evidence of you know the authority of the Pope, the chair of Peter, with you know the keys to the kingdom, and Peter being the rock. And we have all of this. There's writings on all of this, you know, and yes, yeah, some of them are in the Bible and some of them aren't, but that's what you can't just do Bible alone. You have to look into history. So I love what Trent said. He asked his brother and sisters, like, hey, I'm gonna go become Catholic. And they said, hey, that's great. Like, as long as you believe Jesus Christ is your savior, you're good. And he was like, but don't you wanna find out what church Jesus would want you to join? Like, does Jesus want you to be Baptist? Does he want you to be Methodist? Does he want you to be Lutheran? Does he want you to be Angelican? Or does he want you to be Catholic? How do we know, right? We have to look at that early, early church and see what church is practicing in the same way that as much as possible, right, that the early church is practicing. And you have to think of it this way because, you know, we're not in Rome in, you know, 100 AD, right? We're in wherever we are in the world in 2018. So it's going to look different, but we have to see if the elements are there. Like the initial, you know, those original elements are still there. The Eucharist, confession. <laughs> you know, priests, the Pope, you know, let's, let's talk basic elements of the church. Does your church have those basic elements? So it's, it's something to think about. So one of the things you can ask yourself is who started your church? I have this great list here in the box and I want to actually just put this list in the description so that if you guys are curious, like when your church started, if you're not Catholic, um, I will inform you. But pretty much, you have the Catholic Church at 33, you know, by Jesus Christ. You have the Eastern Orthodox Church at 1054 by the Eastern Patriarchs. And then the Lutheran Church in 1517. So, and then, it, you know, it splinters off from there. And I also have a really cool chart that I'll put in the description. 
that shows kind of in a linear way like what happened with like you know Catholic Church and then kind of the branches off of it. Let's talk about what Catholic means. So St. Ignatius of Antioch said, wherever Jesus Christ is, there is also the Catholic Church. Now, let's talk about what the word Catholic means. It's a Greek word and it means according to the whole. So a lot of people say that Catholic means universal and that's because the, the uniqueness of the Catholic Church because of the Pope is that you can go anywhere in the world and celebrate Mass. Celebrate the sacrifice of the Mass and it's the same. It has the same elements and you're receiving Jesus Christ. He's present at every single Mass. Anywhere in the world. And that is an awesome understanding of the word Catholic. But it's not the first and main understanding. It's the same church regardless of where and when it is found. Whether you find the Catholic Church in 1000 AD or you find it today, or you find it in 50 AD, it is the same church. It's the same church that those first Christians were practicing. And so if you want to be a part of that same church, there is still time, you guys. Like RCA is going on right now. So if you are like, whoa, wait, what? Like I didn't know this. If maybe you didn't ever think about where Catholicism came from or what church the early, you know, the earliest Christians were celebrating, you guys can go to RCA still. Pop over to whatever parish is nearby you, call them up, email them, or just find out when their RCA program is and literally walk in. No one, I promise you, no one's gonna turn you away from being like, hey, I kinda wanna join the church or at least find out more. You're gonna be welcome. But you gotta do it now because it is a process and as you get further, closer and closer to um, Easter Vigil Mass, like there's gonna be a cutoff and you'll have to wait till next fall to join and that, is heartbreaking for any of you who want to receive the true body and blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, like run to RCA now before it's too late. So that's just my RCA plug. And I love hearing from you guys and you say, hey, I went to Mass for the first time, or I'm coming back to the Catholic Church, I was, I've was, i been away, or oh my gosh, if you tell me you're going to RCA, I flip out. So please, in the comments down below, tell me if you're returning to Catholicism, if you are going to RCA, if you have gone to Mass for the first time and you're just like, whoa, I, I want to know what you think. I had an atheist tell me that he went to Mass for the first time and he's going to go back. And that's okay. You can go to Mass as an atheist. You can't take communion. You can't receive Jesus into your body and blood, you know, into your body until you have gone through RCA and really understand it. Because as St. Paul says, you know, receiving the Eucharist without being in a state of grace can cause, is a grave matter. Like it can be detrimental to you. And so it's a safety catch for the Catholic Church to stop you from receiving the sacraments until you are fully aware of what it means because it's a big deal. I mean, you got to be prepared. So you guys, I have so many quotes. I have so many early, early church father things here. You know, the early church definitely believed it was the body and blood, soul, and the divinity of Jesus. There's no doubt. There's writings up and down about the Eucharist. There's writings about the Pope. There's writing about priests. This book, if you are a Protestant or if you are a Catholic and you are coming up with these kind of questions, you know, from Protestants, get this book because it's so, I, there's just too much for me to cover and it is so good. And you, as Catholics, you need to know these answers. And as Protestants, you know, if you have questions about the Mass or something or why we do what we do, why we call our priest father, why we don't believe in Sola Scriptura, why we, you know, have a Pope, I mean, why we baptize infants, whatever. Everything is in here and it's very easy to read. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell. I put out uh, video, new videos every Monday and Thursday. So make sure you ring the notification bell so that you know when I put new videos out. Also follow me on Instagram if you don't already. I'm at LauriaJW2007. And I'm also on Facebook. So I put up stuff about, that's like longer than I can put up on Instagram. So like more like link stuff is on Facebook. So have a blessed day and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Thanks so much for joining me for this book club. Bye.